Hi everyone. Today is November 1st and I had a goal of picking tomatoes on November 1st. So I thought I would take us inside the greenhouse in the snow and see what's going on in there. It is 34 degrees out here today. And inside I thought I would take a few temperature readings. Like here in the cold room, it is... It's about 55 degrees and it is 3 p.m. And it's not incredibly sunny outside. It's pretty overcast, but not completely gray. So that's at the top of the cold room. So then down at the floor of the cold room, it is, it's only 51. So now let's see going into the greenhouse. So it is November 1st and I really, I picked some stuff in here already today and I really had to take my jacket off and my hat because it's humid in here for one. So inside the greenhouse it is 66 degrees and like I said it's 33 outside and it's not very sunny today and I was able to pick all of this. So. I just think it's pretty cool to be able to come into a greenhouse in northern Minnesota on November 1st and pick cucumbers, tomatoes, bell peppers. I picked another lime. And I'm also going to pick um, some parsley and some thyme. After freezing our butts off last night, trick-or-treating I decided I'm gonna make some chicken and dumpling soup so I came to get some parsley and some thyme I've also got a bunch of peppers back here the shishito peppers that I'm gonna pick now I've always been told or I was under the impression that shishito peppers are all mild that's not true I have picked several, like I would say one out of every 10 or 15 is spicy. And what I accidentally did the other day was pick some serrano peppers that I mistook for shishito peppers. And we ate those in a ramen bowl and my mouth was on fire. And I don't know if it's like if you let them turn red that they get hot or if it's that they're older and they get hot. I'm not sure what it is because I've had green ones that are hot and I've had red ones that are not hot. Yeah, like that just tastes like a sweet pepper, but this one could be hot. Some of the other things still growing in here are Owen's Carolina Reapers and I was just trying to see if I could get them, get one of them to turn red. There's one there. There's a pretty big one right there. But maybe, I don't know, they might just be green. I don't know if they're hot if they're green. We'll have to wait and see. But that was Owen's project. He actually overwintered that plant last winter so that we would have a long enough season to maybe get a pepper on it. And we did get peppers, but um, nothing red yet. I've still got some of the lilac bells. Hey, get out of there. <laughs> the peppers started late this season, but they, they started. We've got lots of tomatoes over here yet. Well, I should say we have lots of tomato plants. I don't know that there's many tomatoes on them yet there are a few it's hard to see Let's see if i can point them out so i've got some here there's a bunch up there and these are actually my favorites um and i don't know if it's because of where we are but in we're in zone three but the thorburns terracotta it's an orange tomato it's my first tomato to ripen, it's my last tomato to ripen, and it's my favorite as far as taste goes. And that's what those are. And I also have some cherry tomatoes that are still going, the um, 
Sun Gold, and the Sweet 100s. We do have some beets and some rutabagas back there. They look a little weedy. And I've also got some beets right over there. And the cucumbers are still going strong. I just picked some cucumbers today. And I've still got a bunch on there. So lately I've been getting questions about pollinators and um, how, you know, do things get pollinated in here? And typically we choose things that don't require pollinators, but then if there is something that I plant in here just because I want to try it, I will hand pollinate things like zucchini. Um, trying to think what else I've hand pollinated in here. We've had, um, I did those Minnesota midgets um, cantaloupes. And I don't know if I needed to hand pollinate them, but I did. So any melons or squash that I put in here, I've been hand pollinating. And you know, it doesn't take very much to come in and do that. But we are also, you know, there are some days we just leave windows and doors open because it's the perfect, you know, temp outside. But for the most part, I plant things like the unagi and the diva cucumbers in here, and they don't require pollinators. As for the trees, um, those things I have been hand pollinating, and it just is a matter of coming in and kind of rubbing the flower a little with my hand. I can show you. I have a few over here I can try. So this is a bear's lime tree or a Persian lime. I have yet to get a lime off of it, but I just come and kind of rub the pollen around the middle. We did also choose fruit trees based on whether they were self-pollinating or not. Or not. Now the bear's lime um, is self-pollinating, but it does better if it has another lime tree. And I believe it doesn't matter what variety. So that's why we have um, the key lime also. But right now, all we have is the Persian lime is flowering. This Valencia orange does have a couple of fruit on it, but just very little. So we'll see if they stick. Um, and the key lime has limes on it. Actually, I thought this was a Eureka lemon, so I'm not entirely sure. This is not a key lime. This must be something else. I don't know exactly what this is because the tag it came with said it was a Meyer lemon. So, but I cut one open and it sure looks and tastes like a lime. The fig never did a thing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with the fig. These up here, so this is a, a like an orange, but a mini orange, like those little mini tangelos. And that doesn't have any fruit or flowers. And this I think was the key lime that I almost killed last winter. Yeah, but I don't have any fruit or flowers on that. And some of you may be wondering where the peach trees are. They are outside and they are gonna stay outside and I don't care if they don't ever come back inside. They probably won't make it through the winter. They were the ones that had the spider mites so bad. I just realized while putting this video together that I never really ended it. So just wanted to jump in and say thanks so much for watching. I hope some of you out there are just as excited as I am to be harvesting on November 1st in zone three.